For instance, if you go to point 11, just go point 11A, where we talk about community share ownership schemes. We as BLF say that to counter the culture of patronizing corporate social responsibility concessionary programs that has traditionally characterized the big mining sector, we are saying that we need a secured uh, for community a proportion of at least 20% of equity in the mining businesses. It is not a favor. You know, mining houses, these colonial constructs, these racist, violent uh, monsters, uh, think that they are doing a favor to our people, pro promising to build houses which they never do, providing social amenities which they never do. They are just here to steal and plunder. Now we say ownership of our people, and we say 20% of ownership in the area where the mining house is. And that is why we want to employ the communities of Sikukuni, that we must support the mining charter so that we press for direct ownership. And then I'll quickly move to also, uh, if you go to the second page, uh, page three, we want uh, a worker and state ownership. And quickly to simply say, also for us, is workers must own 20% instead of the 8% which has been provided for by the uh, mining charge. Also, a uh, black uh, business must own that 14% provided for. And then if you are to go down uh, to D2, I just want to highlight there that at the level of procurement, we agree with the mining charter that at least 70% of goods procured in the mining uh, sector must be legislated in terms of this bill that they must, uh, go to, must come from black people. In E, we are calling for a National uh, Sovereign Wealth Development Fund, which uh, basically all nations that have mineral resources have this, which is really a state of the, the national wealth, how it is organized. And this will help those of us who are not in the mining sector, who are not workers or who are not entrepreneurs, Ordinary South Africans must get a dividend from the minerals. South Africa has the highest deposit uh, of minerals known on earth. At the end of a financial year, ordinary South Africans, after we pay for schools, for healthcare, and all that, we must get a dividend in cash. That must come into our pockets. And black people must get first. If there's anything left, we'll see what to do with white people. <laughs> because this is reparation. White people have benefited for 350 years. They can't benefit now. We must deal with those who have been excluded first, and then whites. If we so feel, we might do something about it. Now, I will I will jump this uh, provision that we make in the interest of time uh, in page on the strategic objective. You will read that yourself. Uh, but I do want to talk about the, 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 the penal uh, provisions. You know, even the, the presentation before us did indicate there's a problem of uh, non-compliance and where the law says certain things must happen, they never happen. Uh, we are saying that instead of the penalties which are suggested by the bill, which in summary would be the fine of five million rand or five years in terms of in terms a five years term of imprisonment and also that fine of a uh, hundred a thousand or two years we will reject this 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 uh, must be changed and the way it must be changed we say that it must move to penalties must uh, equate to 50 percent of the of the annual turnover of the year of a uh, transgression and this is linear this we should be saying 100 percent turnover of that year of transgression but we are we are lenient we're allowing these criminals some breathing space <laughs> and then we're saying that those who are found guilty uh, should serve a minimum of 10 years in jail and then this bill must strengthen its a uh, monetary and non-compliance mechanism because they are very weak now chair on to turn to a matter which we believe the bill is silent on, and that is what is called the Zamazamas. Uh, the amendment or the bill is silent on the Zamazamas. These are the real are the real miners and owners of the land. BLF calls.
for the legal recognition of the artisanal or small scale miners known as the Mazanas. These, as we say, are the real owners of the minerals in our country. They are not a foreign force here to exploit and murder like a lone me yes. that killed our people in Marikana with the assistance of the current deputy president of the country, Sir Ramaphosa. He is the one who called the police and they murdered our people there in Marikana. We buried people in Marikana in defense of a foreign force called lone me. And lone me, this is a shocking thing, Che. You know, the, let's just deal with this. Oak Bay, uh, the so-called Gupta uh, company, the, the, the accounts are being shut down by the, by the banks. Loan me a confirmed known mass murdering company is running its business uh, with no problems in this country. These opposition parties that claim to fight for economic freedom, they have not called for Loan Min to leave this country. But they are jumping up and down and saying the Guptas must go or President Zuma must go. But here they are murderers. Are here and they are doing business. We are saying uh, that must change. Uh, the, the Zamazamas are the uh, real owners of these minerals. We, we say we are clear that these white coal mines continue to terrorize our people and even murder them. If you go to Kimberley today, our comrades have been killed by these mining houses. The BNF advises that the bill incorporate a provision for the formal recognitions of the Zamazama minors. So we must decriminalize them. There must be a clear provision for decriminalization of these artisanal minors. Also that the state and the mining houses, by law, must be tasked with ensuring the safety of the Zamazama minors. We don't have the time now, but if you think about it, mostly when there is this is safety questions, it's because these criminal white-owned mining houses have come into our communities, they have mined, they, have to, they took all the, our minerals, and they leave these uh, mines uh, as holes where our people uh, left with hunger and they end up going to mine it. So the responsibility of safety of when our people, these so-called Zamazamas, must lie with the mines and the state. And then a very important uh, proposal we are making is that the state or the government be the official buyer of the Zamazama product. You see, Honorable Chair, I mean, Chair and, and members, those who are honorable amongst you, <laughs> the, 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 the question of how Zamazamas actually go down the mines in some in Kimbal is more open crust. They get these minerals, whether it's diamonds, whether it's gold. You know who actually buys from them? We have no capacity to buy. It is white monopoly capital. It is Johan Rupert and the upper numbers who benefit directly from the Zamazamas after having made them illegal and attacking them when they actually uh, go and mine. So let us resolve this issue. The state must say, Zamazama, go get your diamonds, go get your uh, uh, gold, bring it to the state. We'll buy at a good price. In this way, we'll actually deal even with criminality. Because you're not driving black mining underground. You bring it on the surface, you, pro you provide a good price for our people, you provide a security, and our people will not also fight amongst themselves the way it is. We have criminalized our people and creating the conditions that are there when our people fighting uh, in these areas. We are saying there are uh, Zamazama miners. No, Zamazama miners are the owners of the land and the mines. And therefore, this committee, if it's serious about uh, uh, providing support for black people, we, we suggest you, you do this and you buy from the Zamazamas. We also ask that this bill should include a provision for freeing, freeing all the currently arrested Zamazamas. Lots of our people called Zamazamas are in jail as I speak to you. Lots of them, they are arrested for mining our own lands. In the communities in Limbobu, we go there. The police are busy arresting our people instead of arresting white monopoly capital, which are the real criminals. People must pay pay. People are so now let me turn to the mining charter. There was a white man who spoke here before this Kuni, uh, community spoke. He demonized the mining charter, just like all the white monopoly capital. We want this committee to recognize and it will be good, Chair. To acknowledge uh, Minister Zwani, Zwani, 
as a revolutionary visionary minister who correctly interprets what is meant by radical economic transformation as provided for by the president of the country in the sauna. That is why we are saying everybody must support this uh, charter now. Even when we have some questions about it. But we must support because remember for 23 years we have not been able to benefit anything. Here comes a minister Zwane and says in 12 months we must achieve the 30% black ownership. That is revolutionary. That is visionary. That is good for all of us. We are not even going to talk about all these other provisions because of time of the, of the, of the charter itself. But then what does it mean in terms of the bill before you? This charter. Because the charter comes now. Long after the bill uh, we have been engaging with it. All we are suggesting is that this committee aligns the bill with the provisions of the charter. Make them legal. Don't listen to that white man who, who said beneficiary of theft. Who's saying that the minister is trying to use the executive to impose? No, but we are here in parliament today. We are saying, you parliament, use the parliamentary systems to regularize and make sure that the provisions of the charter are as the law provides. What is wrong with that? You know, white arrogance also makes white people ignorant. <laughs> this, is a, this is a real problem. So we are, we, are, we are standing before you and saying, committee, let us align the, the bill with the provision of the, of the child. And I'm not going to go through those, but the beautiful provisions, the 30%, the 8% employee, employees share, the 8% mining committee share, the, the 14% black entrepreneurs shares. We, we, we support that, including our own uh, uh, moves that we, we, we have indicated earlier. So we support this as a transitional mechanism. Once we have the 30%, then the 8%, 8% here, we then consolidate and then move to the next uh, a layer of demand. Uh, we will leave all that and then come to uh, chair, an important uh, point that I, I'm, I invite you now to go to the last page, which is page 8. <coughs> here we now deal with the transformation of the banking system. Chair. It is not going to help us to have a very good bill and legislation that provides for black people to benefit in the minerals of the country. If the financial sector itself remains a cartel run by the white few families such as the Rupert's, they're shutting down bank accounts, they're criminalizing us at will, they are refusing to support the black bank processes, and we said we want to get a dividend. If these whites, this white monopolist capitalist, or control the banking system, how is that money coming to come to our, uh, to our banks, I mean, to our pocket? Because we know they shut down banks of those they hate. And ourselves as a revolutionary movement, which supports the fact that land belongs to black people, and we must be black first, we are also knowing we're meeting hostility in the banking sector already as I speak to you. So what are we going to do? and the honorable committee, or that part of the committee is honorable, <laughs> is that uh, we need to reform the, uh, the mining sector, or uh, let me read this, the important reforms of the mining sector are going to be sabotaged by the colonial, racist, and corrupt banking sector. I hope you all know that the commission commission has just come, the competition commission has just come out with a, a determination that more than 17 uh, banks are involved in corruption. We also know in 2015 those banks when President Zuma wanted to appoint a proper minister, not a captured minister such as Pravino and Santanene. They, the banks, took away 500 billion in three days of the JS. We know that. So, and the Competition Commission has also confirmed this. Furthermore, our public protector just yesterday has released the report that shows that APSA is a rogue bank. Huh? It's a criminal bank. Yeah. Now, these provisions on the, on the uh, banking system are not directly, we, we are clear, are not directly related to what you are doing here, but uh, surely in the interest of um, governance, which is interrelated, we can send this message over to the minister uh, responsible or the committee is responsible. And of course the ruling party is the same ruling party that sits 
uh, in the other uh, committees. Now we are saying that. Sorry, just a minute. You are left to with five minutes. Okay, I will. I will. I will. Then and I will. my worry is that you no longer talking on the bill, but I felt I must give you some time. But now you are left with five minutes. Thank you, Chair. No problem. Uh, that white man uh, spoke, and then you gave him further five minutes. So I put more for I've got another five minutes. <laughs> and order, order, Mr. Nita. Let, let, let's do things accordingly. For instance, it's not correct for you to debate the presentation of another stakeholder. You're supposed to be sticking on your own. Thank Give you, Chair. minutes to myself. Thank you, Chair. In the, a definition of debate, uh, it's never restricted to, but uh, let's leave that. The, so, so we are saying here, the banking sector, the cartel must be broken, and a clear message must be sent that uh, for in the interest of holistic radical economic transformation and uh, the necessity uh, to act in tandem with, uh, in particular, treasury, it must be impressed upon, it must be impressed upon the Minister of uh, uh, Minerals, Malu City Gaba, that is a reluctance to move with great speed to licensing a black bank and a state bank is an act of self-sabotage. If we are not going to have a black bank and a state bank soon, like in 12 months, we must forget about this. Because white monopoly capital is going to close down. Treasury must be employed to immediately fully license banks that are black or state-owned and we release some of them here, such as the VBS, such as the Post Bank, and also a black bank. It must come into line. This must happen immediately, or blacks are going to be in perpetual mercy to banks such as APSA. In fact, we are clear that APSA itself, uh, the state must immediately withdraw all its account with APSA. And these monies, which are lots of monies, can then be used to support the emergence of a black bank and a state bank, which will then be able to support our communities and our people as we take the minerals uh, back to our people. The, the hegemony of your hand, Rupert, in the banking sector must end. Yeah. And it's only the bravery of you as a committee, with us, the people, that can ensure that. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, can I then ask the members of the committee to ask questions? I see the hand of Honorable Nyambi. <coughs> Thanks, Chair. Two questions. The first one is about the Zama Zama. As a committee, when would we deal with it? Maybe my interest is to understand how is it going to be done because, like, I'm from Pumalama, and Zama Zama people, they don't just do it in Pumalama. If you find somebody from Pumalama doing it in Houteng or in Popo, and uh, only to find that the community in that particular area would be reporting saying no, let it be somebody who's doing Zama Zama, who's from Sekukun, instead of having somebody coming from Haute. So I, I, I miss that part, how it's going to be done, because it's not people that are, that are deciding in their municipalities. The second one is about uh, the process we're involved in. As we are aware that uh, the bill was referred back by the president, and uh, we are the house that represented the interests of provinces. So out of interest to say, are we going to be getting the same presentation because there will be public participation at provincial level in all the nine provinces? Or the one that is being presented by the national structure is going to be different to the one that will be done by the province? But it's out of interest right, so that we can understand and it will make our life much more easier when doing the consultation ultimately at the end. Thanks, Chair. Okay. No other hands you can respond. <coughs> Okay, th thanks, thanks, Chair. No, uh, see, if we regularize the Zamazamas, it will actually uh, assist in making sure that duplication and the actual uh, domicile of uh, the Zamazama is clarified. Of course, our attitude as a Pan Africanist organization is not to say uh, you are from Pumalanga or you're from Zimbabwe or you are from Nigeria. If you are in the bank, in the, in the mining sector, you have an equal right, because the exploitation of our people by the mining sector, you know, it, it went to Africa-wise. So every black person uh, who uh, engages in the a process of independent mining, which is this, what we call Zamazama, should be registered, supported, 
And in this way, I will not necessarily be mining in Pumalanga and, and another place because it will be in the register. Or unless there's a justification for why I should be uh, mining in different areas. By the way, Anglo-American mines everywhere in this country. So that objection is not sustainable, in fact. Unless we say to Anglo-American also, you can only mine in one place. So let us allow our people to mine, use their energies and their and the communities. What kind of a community is that which is not supporting the Zamazamas who are mining in its own backyard? The first people must be that community that organizes the Zamazamas. We are not enemies. We are the same people. So our advice to the community is you cannot join the Zamazamas, protect the Zamazama, be a Zamazama yourself. And in this way, we can resolve this issue. In terms of your second question, indeed, this, this is a national uh, a presentation, but you will see when you come to the provinces, we'll tailor it to deal. Of course, the framework will be the same, but there are specificities. Like if you go to the Northern Cape, there is a specific problem there, which is different from the problem of the of Limbobo, for instance, where people are facing uh, serious uh, evictions. But the arresting of people in the different types of minerals uh, give us a different texture. So you will hear us in the provinces, but we will be emphasizing the actual experiences per province. Here, for instance, we should be talking about Per Le Moon. You know Per Le Moon, Alba, Alba, Andolan? Avalon. That is, that is our thing, that thing. It's a black people's property. These white people who are having licenses must be revoked. They must not like, uh, be. That Avalon is ours, and we are not benefiting from it. And that is an issue for this province. But we are saying we'll make those emphasis as you move in the different provinces. Is that a follow-up on a Yeah. Okay. Uh, no. Um, I was covered. I, ne I never wanted to raise it earlier on because it was going to divert him and deal with what I want to raise now. I'll be failing as a member of parliament if I'm not raising it. Uh, to BLF, maybe in the future if you are coming to parliament, for us to be able to focus on the substantive nature of your presentation instead of other issues that are sideways. It will really assist us to avoid creating unnecessary confrontation, like when you refer to us that uh, if you are honorable, it means we are implying that we are not honorable, and that is not correct, and that is not the essence of your presentation. But if you come in, respect us, we respect you, we focus on the presentation, we shake hands, we leave, and then that's it. But uh, the fight sometimes is not necessary. So it's, an, it's a brotherly advice from an honorable member of this. <laughs> 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 yes, thank you, honorable Nyan. Maybe a part of addition. So that when you respond to it, you respond uh, uh, to all of them. Also, as from the chair, I'll be failing the house if I do not protect the organizations that we here to present to be labeled the force of the Yakala. It, it's unfortunate that I'm from the organization that believes on non-racialism. So if in this house we promote that white people should be called names in meetings that are chaired by us, it would be not correct because we, we stay with them, we work with them, they are part of South Africans. I think that one, I must also raise it Richard. Thank you. Thanks, Chair, and the, the Honorable Yanilas. Uh, honor is not declared, but they must say, properly be earned. Uh, you know, I, 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 I do not say this with the attempt to minimize. If you feel honorable, then you must be honorable. Don't worry. The only that is honorable must feel that uh, this affects them. Honorable uh, blacks must not feel injured. But how are you honorable when you are landless in your own country also? That, it's a question. It's just a question. Landless people can never be honorable because they are tenants in their own land. We, are, we live under 
the condition of general dis dishonor mm. in our own land. What a black majority, we call each other men honorables, occasionally insult each other when all of us are landless. It is a matter that I think we must think about, all of us as black people. That is why we support President Zuma when he says land expropriation without compensation. And some of the not so honorable members are shaking on this question. Now, uh, Chair, non-racialism cannot mean we can't say white people are white and white people stole our land. Now, racialism, if it means you must lie, then it is a dishonorable proposition. The man who spoke here and rubbished the mining charter is a white man who benefited from colonialism. We, it is not a disputed fact. 1652 white people arrived here. They stole our land. They enslaved us today. White people have more than 80% of our land. We are landless. In Kailicha today, our comrades have been murdered just for a piece of land to call a home. Mm. I am not ashamed. All the land is in your hands. The black majority don't have land. We don't even have land to bury our own. Do you know that? So, no. If non-racialism is a denial of a historical fact, and the fact that 23 years later, we have the vote, those people still have the land. No, a honorable member. That is not very honorable. Let us correct that matter so that we can be properly honorable people working proudly in our country, knowing that the land and the minerals belongs to us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.